We started the whole program in ILG about four years ago. And uh, we've had a number of faculty in the A&M system, including AgriLife Research, that are experts in algae. We never have brought them all together in a program that uh, is a systems approach to algae production for commercial purposes. And so this was a great opportunity that uh, sort of came together at the right, uh, uh, right time. And, and it started several different ways. It started first with a, with a, a federal grant from the, uh, the Air Force to conduct some basic uh, research on algae cultivation. And that project is still con uh, continuing. And it's sort of the basis for the work we do in algae right now. Uh, a lot of the basic works in terms of how you produce the algae, the agronomics, if you will, behind it, the biology behind it, also uh, uh, testing instrumentation uh, issues like that. So that, that essentially got us started uh, with our partner, General Atomics. Uh, shortly thereafter, we got a major $4 million grant from uh, the Governor's uh, Office of Technology, uh, uh, ETF, uh, as they call it, uh, that provided $4 million to essentially build this facility as you see it now. And, uh, and that uh, money was split between us and General Atomics. General Atomics did uh, some of the work in San Diego. The, the balance of the work was done here to essentially equip this test stand that we, we, uh, we have here at Pecos now. There is a lot of potential and interest in algae. Uh, you, uh, you see that uh, Exxon uh, committed to $500 million research program for it. And so there's a, 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 there's a lot of interest beyond just hype and algae. Uh, the question is, how do we make it a commercially viable enterprise and how do we demonstrate that? How do you scale it up? And, and how do you uh, go from a laboratory like this out to thousands of acres? And the scale up issues are, are huge. And so those are a number of the issues that we're looking at uh, here is just how do we scale it up? And if we can scale up the algae uh, production, there are a number of different positive attributes. Number one, it has the potential of producing about 10 times more oil per acre than an oil seed crop that you'd produce using conventional agriculture. It also has the potential of producing some very good co-products like uh, feed for shrimp farming and and fish farming and also animal feed. And so not only do we produce the byproducts, we produce the oil. And the oil could be converted into jet fuel or diesel or, or, or uh, any type of transportation fuel. So it has a lot of value there. Uh, again, we, uh, we have to demonstrate that it can be commercially scaled up to produce large scale and it's economic. And, the, and that's exactly what we're going through now. Or, or what are, where are the pitfalls in scale up and, and, uh, and how do we do the job right? And that's what A&M is so good at. We're good at farming. We're good at agricultural technology. And this is agricultural technology. How do you farm algae? There's two great areas for algae production. And the, the biggest driver is solar radiation. Solar radiation is a fuel that fires algae, if you will. Uh, in addition to the CO2 that it takes. Uh, so what we do is we think that uh, uh, this area, because it does have high solar radiation, and also because it has a lot of available land, it, there won't, won't be competing land uses, makes an excellent location. Basically, the Trans-Pecos area all the way to California is, a, is, is the best area in terms of solar radiation to produce algae. There are some limitations, water availability and how you utilize water, and is there enough water to go around for, for uh, millions of acres of algae production in the desert southwest. That's another technical issue that we're researching to determine which aquifers work best, are they sustainable, are they, uh, how, how do you manage algae so that uh, so you have a sustainable uh, water management system. We have two major algae facilities in the state of Texas, this one at Pecos and then the other one at Corpus Christi. And, that, and, and, and those are our two major algae uh, R, D, and D facilities in the state of Texas. 
this one represents the desert southwest, the Trans-Pecos area. The other very viable approach is a coastal application where you would actually use seawater to produce algae. And so the Corpus Christi area, the Corpus Christi uh, Center is ideally stationed uh, to demonstrate an entirely different approach. A lot of the same types of production techniques we're demonstrating here, but, but a lot of different things you look at in terms of the water quality, water quantity, uh, how you operate the facility, proximity to end users, and, and, uh, and say possibly even using city wastewater uh, in the algae ponds, using uh, uh, flow from uh, exhaust flows from uh, refineries and power plants for the CO2. Some of our agricultural engineers in College Station right now are developing real-time monitoring systems so they can monitor these algae uh, raceways on the go and give you early warning if something is going wrong. Is the pH changing? Is the salt content changing? Are the nutrients changing? And can we adjust that on the go so we don't have to have a lot of, of employees out there watching these things? So that's all part of the technology that we have to, have to worry about. We have a number of partners in our program. We started with, with Air Force, then the Governor's Emerging Technology Fund helped establish the PECAS facility. That led to uh, uh, other activity with the Department of Defense and, and then a, 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 reg, a, a very large major award from DOE, a $50 million award from DOE for uh, the DOE Algae Consortium. And, and we are a part of that along with Los Alamos National Lab, New Mexico State, the Danforth Center, very, very large program in algae, and we uh, wouldn't have been involved if it hadn't been for this facility.